where is this background? I I think it can be anywhere. <laughs> it can be anywhere. I don't know where it is. Yeah, I don't know where it is. <laughs> it could be in Forbidden City. Or maybe some park. <laughs> <laughs> Where is this background? Oh, I see. Everybody is interested in this question. Yes. <laughs> I don't know where it is. <laughs> Maybe Forbidden City, because you, you can see the roof of dragons. That's usually the emperor allowed to do that. You know, for other people to have a dragon on their roof, it's really a <laughs> ask for trouble. Actually, I'm confused. Was there some echoing or earlier there was some echoing? Maybe the I hope right now there's no echo. Hello, hello, is that okay? Yes, it's okay. Yeah, but that's good. I just want to make sure that okay. So I couldn't see myself, but let me just uh, log in and wait. Um, Actually, I'm confused. Was there some echoing or earlier there was? Julian, you are muted. That's why there is no echo. <laughs> Hi, Eduardo. <laughs> you always have this beautiful background. <laughs> yes. Far from as, the winter. <laughs> as you know, this is my backyard, right? In Urbana. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I really feel for Texas. You know, I, I never thought that Texas can be cold, you know. Yes. It's been it's incredible. It's <laughs> really incredible. Yeah. Same on Catherine. Lots of names I haven't seen for a while. Hmm. Yes, and some some trouble. I <laughs> he has problems with with echoes, I think. But,
he's he's speaking. I mean. Oh yes, sorry. I was uh, finding that there are something like uh, maybe there's some background was playing and you repeat. Anyway, so okay, I think it's uh, time to uh, start. Just a second, what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, uh, welcome everyone. A uh, welcome to Harvard University Center of Mathematical Science. And application quantum matter in math and physics seminar series. Uh, today we are very honored to have a professor uh, Xiaogang Wen, uh, Wen Xiaogang from MIT. He will be speaking about the story on the problem, uh, a solution to the problem of the chiral fermion. And as some of you may know, uh, today is uh, just the seventh day of the new year for the Chinese New Year. And actually, today uh, this year is a very special year. Um, as you uh, notice on the screen. Uh, many prominent uh, mathematicians like Professor Yao and Professor Wen and actually Professor Sashdev, they are turning, uh, sorry for revealing the age, but they are turning the fifth and the sixth cycle of the 12-year uh, the cycle of this, uh, the calendar, the Chinese New Year calendar. There are also many prominent uh, physicists, uh, Papa Witten and uh, and many more, and uh, Professor Cyber. I think this will be a, a great, new, great new year for uh, this physicist, and we want to give uh, use this opportunity to uh, congratulate congratulate them for the uh, wonderful career, and hopefully we'll see more uh, of their beautiful works in the coming year. And so, uh, Professor Wen, do you want to share the screen? Okay, let me share the screen. Yeah. I think. Uh, I yeah, you. So I will stop other to share the screen. So you can do okay. It. okay, thank you, Jovan, uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity. You know, this is a quite a uh, serious uh, in last year or two. You know, it's almost uh, my uh, part of my daily academic uh, or maybe weekly academic life attending this uh, Harvard CMC uh, seminars. And uh, today uh, I'm going to uh, discuss uh, actually a quite old work about a solution to chiral fermion problem. And uh, so I will mainly talk about a mechanism uh, called a mass without mass term. Uh, so uh, we can generate a mass even when the mass term is not allowed. And the related issue, uh, this so-called smooth disordered phase. And using this picture, uh, try to provide a solution to chiral fermion problem. If I have a time, uh, I will also discuss a relation uh, to anomaly. So using the classification of anomaly uh, to solve this uh, chiral fermion problem. It turns out that uh, even chiral fermion with a certain kind of a global anomaly, which is called a gappable global anomaly. And those chiral fermion can still be put on the lattice. You know, we don't really need a completely anomaly uh, free. So first, uh, uh, let me uh, describe a problem in standard model. Uh, usually the standard model is uh, defined via perturbation theory, like a Feynman diagram, order by order. It's a very useful, very accurate uh, definition, but the mathematically inconsistent because this uh, perturbation expansion is not uh, con converging. And as example, to see this uh, point, let's consider a zero dimensional uh, space time. A bosonic, uh, scalar bosonic theory for zero dimensional space time. And their path integral is just a Gaussian integral uh, with this uh, uh, interaction. Okay. And we can expand this interaction order by order and obtain a perturbative expansion of a partition function. When n goes to infinity limit, we are hoping to get this uh, exact uh, partition function. But however, if you look at the consecutive term, and their difference diverge. So like a uh, order 80, when G is a point 01, the difference in consecutive term can be uh, something like 1 million, you know, it really uh, blows up. But however, if you don't look at, at the very high order, look at the lower orders, you can see the, uh, the difference in the consecutive term actually at the smaller and smaller, it looks like a converging theory. At the order of like a, 25, a 25th order, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, the arrow is the smallest. 
And uh, so if you don't look at the infinite order, just look at the 25th order perturbation theory, we will get a partition function you know, with accuracy about the 10 to minus 11. So that's really, really very accurate. But uh, mathematically, it's not uh, uh, satisfactory because uh, uh, we are defining something uh, uh, using something not well defined. OK. So therefore, there's a desire uh, to put a standard model on lattice or have some UV completion to make it a finite problem and to give it so-called non-perturbative definition. So this is mainly a, a problem we are going to discuss here. Um, can I make a remark? Sure, yeah, please. Um, so there is something called Borel resummation and borel eckel resummation, and it is mathematically precise. It's not mathematically inconsistent. You can give a meaning to the perturbation theory and actually the tail that you are ignoring there carries information about non-perturbative, uh, for example, instantons in the, yes. in the problem. There is a okay. precise mathematical machinery. It's called resurgence theory. And okay. it, it makes this thing completely consistent. It is essentially developed by Jean Eccal, mathematician and in physics literature, it is around since 10 years. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, I really uh, am not familiar with this, but uh, maybe let me ask a related question. Uh, whether this uh, Borel resummation would uh, really uh, contain, uh, really obtain the full partition function. And, exactly. Uh, yeah, it is equivalent to uh, picard lefschetz decomposition of the integration cycles. It's a mathematical identity. I can send I you some reference if you want. Oh, thank you. So Witten so, was working on this picard lefschetz theory. It is an exact decomposition of the integration cycles and it is equivalent to this resurgence theory. Okay. So actually, uh, let me just uh, ask another question, which, which that, this result is surprising to me. Uh, let me put this away. Uh, usually when the perturbation theory only probe the so-called local property, let's think of nonlinear sigma model, maybe Very the good. local property. But if a nonlinear sigma model targeted space have a non-trivial cycles, like a, uh, have non-trivial global property, I wonder whether this uh, resummation on the perturbation sequence can capture that. Uh, it, basically, it, that uh, the Eastern Town, you know, for different uh, theory with a different global property, but the same local property may have a different set of Eastern Town. And no. whether this resummation can detect that. Yeah, that, that would be really interesting. This is exactly the point. It's a local expansion, but the stock, when you do Borel resummation, there is a, there's a Stokes phenomena, and Stokes phenomena captures the global structure in the theory. It captures all the instantons in the theory. But what if there is a different, there are, there are different global structure with the same local structure? Whether this resummation can distinguish this different global structure? which have a same local structure. Yes, it can. Oh, that's really uh, 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 surprising, really. Uh, actually, then, then, then one don't need uh, this, uh, then the perturbative expansion and resummation uh, can do the job. So we don't need uh, this uh, lattice regulation. But at yeah. least in many quantum mechanical and quantum field theory system, this is now well understood. So. But by the way, even putting the system on the lattice, it doesn't get rid of this uh, pathology of perturb perturbation theory by itself. Even perturbation theory using lattice gauge theory is um, asymptotic. So yeah, my, my point is that we don't use perturbation at all because uh, you know when you put things on the lattice, uh, there is a way to just uh, compute the partition function at the in principle uh, without relying perturbation theory. Okay, let me let me stop now, and uh, in the discussion we can continue if you want. There sure. Are some yeah. comments I thank want you. Thank you very much okay. for, for this. Thank uh, you. Comment. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, so the standard model, uh, but the standard model have a chiral fermions. Uh, so there's some trouble or difficulty to put the chiral fermion on the lattice, uh, also uh, to have a UV completion of a chiral fermion uh, theory. And so this refers as a chiral fermion uh, problem. But let's uh, really uh, define this uh, so-called chiral fermion problem uh, more uh, precisely. And uh, so, so we have a chiral fermion field theory, such like, uh, like this, which are written in the Hamiltonian form, okay. And we want to find a fermionic lattice model. 
with onside symmetry. So the Cairo Fermion field theory have some symmetry, but the lattice model, this symmetry is required to be onside. Means that uh, the lattice fermion on each side transform like this uh, under this uh, symmetry. So the symmetry action is on the fermion on each side. Okay. And then we, all, we, we want to find this uh, Cairo fermion lattice model with onside symmetry. And such that the ground state of this model do not break the symmetry. And also the low energy excitation of this mo lattice model would reproduce uh, this uh, Cairo Fermion field theory. So this is a, uh, this is a, a more precise statement of a Cairo Fermion problem. But you'll notice that here I did not refer gauge field. And uh, the reason is that uh, since we have onside symmetry on the lattice, we can always uh, gauge the onside symmetry in the lattice model to obtain a gauge theory. Then, we, then in, in turn, we obtain the Cairo Fermion theory coupled to the gauge theory, which is uh, similar to standard model. So that is uh, 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 how we get standard model by gauging the lattice onside the symmetry. And, uh, uh, but uh, in this talk, uh, because gauging is a pretty uh, standard, so I will not talk about the gauging. We will only talk about the Cairo Fermion with a symmetry and how to put that uh, Cairo Fermion uh, on the lattice with the onside the symmetry and without breaking the symmetry and et cetera. So, uh, so we know that uh, uh, because it's a, a fermion doubling problem, uh, we cannot uh, put the chiral fermion on the lattice uh, without interaction. If you don't have an interaction, if the lattice model don't have interaction, there's a doubling problem, so we cannot do it. And uh, so the first attempt to do this is uh, to turn on the interaction, okay. So we say so, hey, I'm a little bit confused about the the order of your presentation. Yeah. Are you claiming that there is any relation between the issues in perturbation theory that you mentioned first in the discussion about Borel summation, comma, the issues of on-site symmetry, comma, the fermion doubling problem, or are these three distinct issues? Because you in presented mind, them as, as if they are somehow related. No, uh, in my mind, they are, uh, they are, I don't know, I don't see their connection actually. But uh, in my presentation, I just mainly just want to say that uh, a particular expansion of a standard model is not enough. That's uh, my first point, uh, which may be not valid. Okay, anyway. And then that, with this, this is uh, something you could have said about 5 4 theory in two plus one dimensions. That's right, yeah. So, so therefore, that has nothing to do with fermion doubling. No. So, and no, so this, no this with anomalies. I, I, I really think that these issues should be separated. Yeah. They're but totally I just different. want to say that uh, there's a desire to have a non perturbative definition. That's only my only point. So, we want to have a non perturbative definition so that when the space time is a finite, the computation of a particular function is a finite calculation. And then we can take a limit. So, this is uh, uh, the, the strategy. And uh, try to turn the problem into a turn the quantum field theory into a finite problem. And this UV completion can be easily done for the five four theory. You know, there's no problem. We can do that. But there are anomalies in finite theories. It, I think you're mixing together totally distinct issues. And uh, the issue of the anomalies. There's the issue of the doubling, and there's the issue of the uh, Borel summation. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, that's, thank you for the question. You're totally right. Even for the finite theory on the lattice, there could be anomalies. And so that's why I emphasize so much about on-site symmetry. So the lattice model we consider the all have this on-site symmetry. And this on-site symmetry guarantee the lattice model can always be gauged. So that's really uh, avoid, avoiding anomaly. So that's my, my way to avoid anomaly. If the lattice model uh, have a non onside symmetry, then that symmetry is uh, anomalous and cannot be gauged. And uh, that lattice model was uh, said to be anomalous. Yeah, that's a very good point. And uh, so indeed there are several issues. One issue is that I want to turn the problem into a finite problem via this uh, UV completion. And in the finite problem, then we can talk about whether it's anomalous, not anomalous, uh, gaugeable, not gaugeable, because the finite theory is uh, rigorously defined. So it's uh, easier to talk about uh, uh, those uh, issues. Yeah. 
And uh, so most naive ways to just to turn on interaction to avoid this uh, uh, fermion doubling problem, which is only apply for the non-interaction theory. But we know certainly this does not work because uh, there is a so-called perturbative anomaly, like the perturbative anomaly in the gravitational sense or in a symmetry sense. And because this perturbative anomaly and uh, the chiral fermion with a perturbative anomaly cannot be put on a lattice. Uh, okay, so this uh, does not really work. Okay, so, so let's just add the condition. So, so if, uh, if this perturbative anomaly uh, prevent us to do that, and uh, so let's just add in condition. So we say that the chiral fermion, which have a no perturbative gravitational anomaly, no perturbative to hoof anomaly, uh, can be realized by interacting lattice model. Okay, so that's the, the second proposal. Excuse and, me? Yes. Uh, Usually, if, let me turn, just... if you turn off gravity, can we forget about the gravitational anomaly? Yeah, uh, the chiro, yeah, we can because the chiro, in, in three okay, parts let, of the dimension, yes, we do the, that. Uh, uh, chiral fermion uh, have no gravitational anomaly. You just put some conditions. Yes. I don't know why I have to worry about the gravitational anomaly if I. In one plus one dimension, uh, chiral fermion can't have a gravitational anomaly. We need to worry about that. You mean nature or you mean new construction? I mean, general theory, general chiral fermion theory in any dimension. In one plus one dimension, a chiral fermion theory could have a gravitational anomaly. Agreed. What does it have to do with your method? My method applied to chiral fermion in any dimension. So that's why I generalize my Including discussion to any dimension. Interacting with the gravitational field, which you put somehow on the lattice, yes or no? No. The gravitational anomaly is an abstraction to put the chiral fermion theory on lattice without concern about the symmetry. So here I have a different definition of a gravitational anomaly which actually is a kind of equivalent to the previous definition, which is coupling to background metric and the deformorphic environments. But the here is a more algebraic definition without thinking about the background metric. It's about the, uh, uh, the you know, we know that the, the, the theory with a traditional gravitational anomaly cannot be put on the lattice. So I'm trying to use gravitational anomaly in that sense. Can you put just gravitational on a lattice? You? No, we, I don't even pretend to do that. I do not, <clears throat> do, we do, I do not want to do that. Well, just, just a second, uh, sorry. Uh, first of all, I think uh, the audience are certainly encouraged. Welcome to ask questions. I don't yeah. have a need to interrupt, but I just want to clarify. I think uh, here the gravitational anomaly was used as a background probe. Gravitational field is not dynamical in the sense with the within the gravitational anomaly that the Shogun is trying to give this. Yeah, Come. it's not dynamical gravity here. It's just so. Let me just uh, make a uh, analog a, that in one plus one dimension, if a central charge of a chiral is not zero, then we say that have a gravitational anomaly, and that theory cannot be put on a lattice. I, I'm sorry, there, there is a symmetry. Okay, whether you put it or not whether you make it dynamical or not, there is a symmetry which changes the background. That symmetry can be general coordinate transformations, which you are not going to address. And that symmetry can be local gauge transformations, which I hope you are going to address. I'm not going to address both because uh, as I mentioned, I won't talk about the gauge theory. I mainly talk about the symmetry. You know, but this symmetry is on site, which can be gauged. So, okay. uh, so, 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 the, so, so that is a gaugeable symmetry. So the symmetry. And uh, I'm not going to talk about the gravity because uh, I'm not going to uh, couple to this background the curvature and things like that. Okay, thank you. Then I'm asking, all your talk actually can be taken as addressing the simplest case of anomalies which are global like the U1 anomaly in QCD if you had massless quarks, correct? Yes. All right, so you are going to give a solution for that problem. Yes, yes. In some Just sense, by yes. writing down a free action without or with interactions. 
with interaction. So, okay. so that's one thing. So, My lattice but, model always have interaction. You know, means a direct from your from your interaction. Okay. So, so the, the question is that uh, if you even allow interaction in the lattice model, can we put a chiroformion which have no perturbative anomaly on the lattice? That is the question. And actually, uh, we, we, there's a counterexample in one plus one dimension. So we cannot do that. There are certain one plus one dimensional theory which have uh, no symmetry. So we don't need to worry about the uh, uh, Tohoff anomaly. But which have also no, per, no perturbative gravitational anomaly. That means central charge equal to zero. And uh, for such a theory, uh, there is a uh, there is an example constructed by uh, Michael Levin that uh, such theory still cannot be regulated by the interacting lattice model. So we do know that uh, there is a one plus one dimensional theory, uh, uh, just requiring a sense of a perturbative anomaly is not enough. But however, in three plus one dimension, uh, this is still open question whether a sense of a perturbative anomaly is a sufficient condition uh, to put the theory on the lattice. Uh, we don't know uh, at the moment. We don't know. Uh, so actually, I will start provide yeah. the, the SU2 Witten anomaly, which is not perturbative. Yeah, uh, the SU2 Witten anomaly is a. Uh, 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 let me see. Well, uh, your construction yeah, yeah, will yeah. allow the construction of a theory where there is no uh, yeah. Witten normally, but will this allow will fail if you try to do. Yeah, that, that, that's maybe the example. Yes. Yeah, so this, uh, actually, actually, you know, not least a little, little bit tricky, but but anyway, yeah, that, that could be the example because when you're gauging the, uh, yeah, there, there's uh, some other issues, you know. Uh, uh, you, I, you just mentioned perturbative versus yeah, yeah. No, not me. Yeah, thank you. So I'm gonna say that the loser have a, a example that they construct this uh, when I have a sense of a, a, a perturbative U1 anomaly, and uh, this uh, 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 then there is a uh, there is a pass integral uh, 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 on the lattice which you can reproduce is a chiroformia which don't have a perturbative U1 anomaly, and but however in that approach uh, there is a projection to the chiral sector. That projection is not on site. So there's an issue whether the, the, the space time pass integral have an independent degree freedom on each space time lattice site. So that's really the locality uh, 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 issue. Whether each lattice site have a lo independent local degree freedom or not. Because when you do the projection, uh, the independent degree freedom became a little bit uh, fuzzy, uh, blurred. And okay. so that is it really important that you here you have a space time lattice, or you can do that in a Hamiltonian formula? Here's a space time lattice in this particular. Okay, so for your discussion, lattice. everywhere in this talk, we can just work in a Euclidean lattice or Euclidean lattice. Be... Thank you, Euclidean lattice. Yeah. So throughout this talk, we are with a Euclidean lattice. Yes, yeah, Thank Euclidean you. lattice. Yeah, no, no, no. yeah, Minkowski, there's even other issues. <laughs> yeah. And so the, the, the question here, actually the, this question for lattice gauge theorist, that whether we can reput, replace this uh, projection to chiral sector uh, by some kind of, uh, uh, by some kind of shortening interaction, you know, and uh, uh, if you can do that, then we can really uh, fix this problem so that we have a local independent degree freedom pass integral, which produce uh, this uh, U1, uh, anom uh, U1 anomaly free chiral fermion and uh, on the lattice. When you say short range, you mean zero after a finite range, or can it decay exponentially? Uh, finite range to be uh, best. Absolutely finite. It, 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 yeah, decay exponential, I think also acceptable, but uh, uh, yeah, this is a shuttle pay. I, I'm, I'm hoping the it's exponential a decay can always be turned to the finite, uh, uh, finite lens, absolute finite lens. And uh, but but here by short range, I'm really hoping the absolute finite lens. Uh, but uh, if it's a Euclidean space, uh, the notion of uh, you know Majorana uh, Fermion or Weyl Fermion, which involves uh, complex conjugation, how it, it is realized in when you're in Euclidean space. 
uh, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm really doing this uh, uh, like in three plus one dimension. I'm really doing this uh, a two commodity while fermion. So, uh, uh, so basically, when I say Euclidean pass integral, really means I have this uh, Hamiltonian and this uh, e to the uh, you know this uh, e to the uh, minus beta h taking a okay. trace. Okay, and that's so my Euclidean pass integral. Right, but it means that your uh, operator, uh, operator basis is essentially it's not Euclidean, it's Minkowski. Uh, well, you know, on the lattice, we just have this uh, Grassmann number or Fermion number on each side, you know. Uh, so, so it is in low energy, uh, we recover this kind of linear dispersion relation and this kind of Hamiltonian. No, no, uh, I, I, no I, I, don't, I don't mind Euclidean, uh, you know, expression, it's okay, but what I'm trying to say is that it's uh, internally involve your operator definition, which refers to until your unitary definition of time, of, of time reversal, and, and in this sense, it is, uh, uh, you know, it, it is a remnant of uh, original Minkowski definition of, of chiral fermion. Yeah, so here when I say chiral fermion, I really mean a two component the wild fermion in three plus uh, one dimension. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, no, but I think that in this way, it's not internally Euclidean. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that you can do it, uh, but it's not a, a internally Euclidean definition. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this uh, I'm, not, not, I'm not so, so clear about this very fine distinction. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, it's really that uh, the low energy Hamiltonian Low energy physics are really described by two component wild fermion. Mm -hmm. But my pass integral is a space time lattice pass integral in Euclidean space. Yeah, no, no. That, that, that's no, that's yeah, not no, but, what I mean. Uh, right, right. Meaning. But you, you can say that it is a Minkowski operator algebra, but a time uh, parameter is imaginary. So, so this is okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, uh, and uh, so then there's a, a so then there's a, a attempt uh, to uh, to 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 get a stronger condition than this uh, just a, a non perturbative uh, uh, no absence of a perturbative anomaly. So there's a particular realization of this uh, uh, interacting lattice model. It's called under the name of a mirror fermion uh, approach. And uh, so the idea is that uh, uh, we know the chiral fermion plus this uh, mirror of chiral fermion. It's a non chiral, it's vector like. And that can be put on the lattice even without interaction. Then the idea is that uh, then we turn on interaction only for the mirror sectors. And hopefully, the, in this interaction, only for the mirror sector can gap out the mirror chiral fermion completely and uh, without breaking the uh, symmetry and uh, without affecting the original chiral fermion. So that is the idea. And this idea is a pretty non-trivial because uh, the chiral fermion usually do not allow the symmetric mass term. Okay, so it's not just adding the mass term to the mirror sector to gap them out. Uh, that's what the break the symmetry. So, so therefore, in order for this to work, we need a symmetric interaction which can gap out the mirror sector even when the mass term, symmetric mass term, is not allowed. So that is really the under the name that the mass without the mass term. It's a coin that I, uh, in this paper, okay. So we need, so the, so the in order for mirror fermion to work, we need a new mass generation, so-called a mass without mass term. And uh, if uh, such a mass without mass term mechanism can happen, then we have this, uh, 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 we have this uh, 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 solution, okay. So, uh, so in, in the original paper of uh, uh, Etchkin and uh, Priskill, they mainly discuss the SU10 uh, uh, case, uh, SO10 case. And uh, here I just uh, summarize the results uh, in, the, uh, in the following condition. Okay, uh, so that's my summary. It's not their statement. And uh, so first uh, the chiral fermion should have uh, no perturbative anomaly. But there's additional condition that uh, this, uh, the mirror chiral fermion can form a, some, some kind of composite fermion, which have a different representation uh, in this uh, symmetry group. And then if you put this uh, uh, 
a mural chiroframia and the compartment together as a whole, then they may allow symmetric mass term, which gap out uh, everything, you know. So, so the, if such condition is hold. So in this is second, maybe some additional condition. And uh, if this works, uh, it may, uh, uh, then we can solve it. Uh, but this uh, certainly this uh, this uh, this second condition a little bit uh, uh, artificial, and, uh, and in particular in one plus one dimension, uh, there is an example that uh, even a novel theory can satisfy the second condition. Even a theory with a perturbative anomaly, it can satisfy the second uh, condition. And uh, so 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 it's a, it's a, so it's not clear whether whether this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this idea uh, really uh, works or not. Okay. And, uh, uh, but however, there is a, uh, after the, this uh, mirror framing proposal, uh, there is a lot of uh, numerical uh, tests and uh, they, they all fails. You know, this, uh, this uh, mass without master mechanism seems all fails. Either, either the chiral mirror cycle is not completely gapped or the symmetry is broken or there's uh, maybe some other things, you know. And, uh, so, 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 so it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of concluded that uh, this attempts to decouple lattice fermion double, doubler by, uh, by method for uh, swift and submit cannot succeed. So this is just another implementation of interaction using the uh, scalar bosons, okay. And uh, so, 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 so therefore- uh, uh, So I have a quick comment. That's my impression. I'm, I don't know what's right or not. It looks like uh, at that time it's concluded. This is maybe a dead end. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Well, I have a quick comment, which is that there are, there are numerical simulations in recent years for lattice models, which do seem to show evidence for symmetric mass generation, your mass or that mass term. Okay. Yeah. I agree it wasn't true historically, but there yeah, yeah. is work with the staggered fermions, which is, uh, is quite supportive of that scenario. Okay. Yeah, so, so recently, yeah, there, there's a, a maybe this, this should be changed. Yeah. So, so at that time, uh, 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 you know, people just uh, turn to some other uh, method like overlap from young, the manual from young, uh, using those methods, uh, try to uh, solve this uh, uh, chiral from young uh, problem. Okay. Uh, but in recent years, uh, there's uh, some development in topology phase matter. And, uh, and then with this, uh, uh, some, uh, some new understanding of uh, anomalies in terms of topological phase matter. So this uh, motivates us to rethink this uh, mirror framing approach. It turns out that uh, uh, we can rescue this uh, uh, mirror framing approach by replacing these uh, two condition uh, with some other condition. So with these two condition. So basically uh, this, that's what we, we call the fourth proposal. And that is to say that uh, uh, this, uh, the massless uh, chiroframion with the symmetry G can be regulated by the interacting lattice uh, model with unsafe symmetry. If the chiroframion satisfies the following condition, uh, there is a mass term that can gap out all the chiroframions, but this mass may break the symmetry down to H. And then this, uh, then the G, co co G quotient H is uh, some symmetric space. If this is symmetric space, have a trivial topology. Basically, pi n is a trivial from zero to d plus two. d plus one is a space time, is a space time uh, dimension. If this uh, is a symmetric space, have a trivial topology. And then, then in this, the chiral fermion satisfy these two conditions uh, can be regulated uh, by the lattice. So that is, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, one way to rescue this uh, uh, mirror uh, fermion approach. And so basically, uh, we try to say that uh, under these uh, uh, two conditions, uh, this mechanism uh, will work. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so the idea is that uh, we're using a Higgs field to generate uh, the, the mass term. We use a Higgs field to generate the mass term uh, for the mirror sector, uh, for the mirror sector. Okay. And then, uh, and then, then we allow Higgs field to fluctuate. And uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, so the Higgs field are described by this non-linear sigma model. The targeted space is this uh, quotient. This symmetric space is a targeted space of a non-linear sigma model. Okay. And uh, certainly in a symmetry breaking phase, the Higgs field is constant. The fermion have a mass. The mirror fermion have a mirror sector have a mass. But we can restore the symmetry and uh, by going to a disordered phase. 
And here the key that uh, we go to disorder phase using only smooth fluctuation of Higgs field. So all those Higgs field are disordered, but the, the fluctuation is smooth with a long correlation length, like a tan lattice spacing. And, uh, and then, uh, then because the Higgs field is more like a smooth locally constant, then we hope uh, this mirror fermion remain to be gapped, remain to have a mass gap. But the Higgs field uh, in the disorder phase also became gapped. And so the both became gapped and then, then the mirror sector is a completed gap. So this is really the idea of a mass uh, without uh, um, mass term. Okay. So and also the mo that's a why the motivation why we have this uh, 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 two uh, condition. Okay. So uh, so the so the chiral fermion sector actually is not affected by this gapping process of a mirror sector. It's really because uh, uh, this mirror fermion. Uh, can be constructed using some kind of so-called slab model, because uh, that's really the this domain wall fermion picture. That uh, the the chiral fermion can be viewed as a boundary of a one higher dimensional uh, gapped phase. Okay, and uh, the mirror sector are uh, live in the other boundary, and uh, this uh, this uh, slab have a finite uh, width, so the whole slab still can be viewed as system in the same dimension, not system with one higher dimension, because they are finite width. Okay, and then, then the Higgs field is only coupled to the, uh, to the mirror sector, so only coupled to the other boundary. And uh, so therefore, uh, this leakage is weak. So there's some small perturbation to the chiral sector by this uh, gapping process. But however, uh, in, the, in the chiral fermion theory in three plus one dimension, a small perturbation uh, is uh, always irrelevant. And uh, uh, so that's a, that 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 won't change the lower energy dynamics. So that's why uh, this uh, 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 this may works. Uh, the chiral sector is uh, uh, unaffected by this gapping uh, process. And here I want to make a remark that this uh, this this Higgs coupling uh, is not weak and also not infinitely strong, but intermediate, and uh, for whole thing to work. Uh, if uh, if you if you go to a strong coupling limit. To make a coupling to be infinity, it won't work. Uh, so, we, we, so we need this uh, Higgs mass uh, at this boundary. It's a less or same order as a bulk, uh, bulk gap. Uh, this is a, a important uh, condition. Okay. So actually, uh, this uh, this procedure actually works uh, for this uh, SU10 SO10 uh, grand unified uh, theory. Okay. And here, certainly, SO time should be really uh, should really say spin time. So, I'm using the traditional terminology, still say SO time. Yeah, please. Yes, I think just want to make uh, audience probably more uh, understand the, the uh, presentation. I think, uh, uh, Xiaogang, you are reviewing some of the old proposal from the first to the third one, which is not your proposal, right? No. Yeah, you should uh, probably not 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 not, not at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. there's not the proposals that the. Uh, you you are trying to propose, but just yeah. This is a this a, this is a first yeah. one is a is a what I proposed. The yeah. first proposal yeah. were well known to uh, failed for some reasons. Well, the fourth proposal was uh, is your proposal, and then you wanna uh, stress that's that's the proposal you had. And certainly, uh, please feel free to interrupt and ask question anytime. Yeah. So so I. I so here I try to say that uh, maybe this uh, this condition is sufficient. So if a chiral fermion satisfies this condition, then it can be put on the lattice model. Yeah. Okay. So uh, actually, if a symmetry is SO10, uh, this SO10, and also if a chiral fermion is in the six-dimensional spinner representation of SO10, then that uh, this condition one and two are satisfied. And we know that the six-dimensional representation uh, can, can fuse into the 10-dimensional representation. And then we can, uh, we can uh, uh, introduce in the Higgs field uh, in 10-dimensional representation uh, and give this uh, a mirror fermion sector a mass term uh, like this, and uh, which break the uh, uh, SO10 symmetry down to SO9 by this uh, Higgs field. But this Higgs field would give all the fermion a mass. The mass is a magnitude of this uh, a vector like uh, Higgs field. Okay. 
and uh, and uh, because it's breaking is so ten to so nine, so so this uh, Higgs field have a targeted space of s nine. It's a nine dimensional sphere. So nine dimensional sphere at the lower dimension, like the five dimension, six dimension, is really trivial. We don't see the non-trivial uh, property of uh, s nine. Uh, and uh, so, so therefore, this uh, S9 nonlinear sigma model is a uh, uh, have a disordered uh, symmetric phase. Yes. Up to the homotopy group of dimension five, I think that's what you mean. But uh, not for higher homotopy group like nine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, so because this S9 is uh, quite a trivial, so we believe this uh, SO, S9 nonlinear sigma model have a disordered uh, symmetric phase. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the disorder symmetric phase, the Higgs field is massive. And uh, then we hope this uh, disorder symmetric phase is induced by the smooth fluctuation and the mirror fermion is also uh, massive. And uh, so, uh, so, so this, uh, this, this, this allow us to design a model, basically design this kind of uh, uh, model, uh, which put this S09 chiral fermion theory or this uh, S, sorry, SO10 a uh, grand unified theory on the lattice. And then, then we can do the symmetry breaking and hopefully we can put on proper Higgs field to break down to one, two, three standard model, but which uh, I did not discuss. But so it really SO10 SO a uh, grand unified theory, uh, at least the fermion sector can be put on the lattice uh, in this way. And this picture also uh, is a hint of design of a lattice model which can, uh, can do the job. So this paper is a submit to the PIL, but the referee don't like it. Actually, this is the most negative referee report I received. So all the author can offer is literally wishful thinking. The manuscript does not even contain any attempts to do scientific work of any kind that will support the claim, no hope of the author. So summarizing this tool, that's a, this paper is not even wrong. Okay. And certainly I'm not really uh, discouraged by this. But I'm hoping the student when receiving a very negative a comment, also not to be discouraged because uh, maybe you are still right, you know. But on the other hand, you know, this very negative uh, referee report really motivated me to think very, very carefully, what is the weakness in this argument? What can go wrong? So actually that's uh, the main, main, main topic of this talk. That is, uh, uh, what is a weak point and how can we address this uh, a weak point? So as you, as you already mentioned that uh, uh, there's a one assumption is that uh, the symmetric phase can be induced by the smooth fluctuation. And this is a uh, very crucial for me. And also there's assumption that the smooth fluctuation would leave a uh, mirror fermion remain massive. That's another assumption. And the Higgs field would have became a massive uh, in the disordered phase, uh, even induced by smooth fluctuation. Maybe that's a third assumption. So, so thinking back on my argument, you know, I thought maybe this three point is a, is a weak point and which you need to be uh, thinking more carefully and uh, to, uh, to, have a, 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 to make this uh, more convincing. But certainly uh, a lot of argument really had to rely on the new marks uh, to really show it really works. And uh, uh, in recent years, I think there's a, a more new marks in this direction. Uh, but uh, let's, uh, let me first address in this point that a smooth Higgs configuration, even though not constant, but the smooth fluctuation uh, of a Higgs configuration uh, will leave the mirror fermion massive, remain massive. And uh, so, so with uh, my student, uh, uh, Michael DeMarco, uh, we, 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 we try to, uh, uh, to check this, uh, this, this assumption. Shagan, can uh, I ask you a question? Yes. Before we get to this. So the assumption here is that the correlation length is very long. Yes. That means you are going to be close to some kind of uh, phase transition, to a continuous phase transition. That's right. It also but, means that there's additional low energy degree freedom. This long correlation length means uh, in addition to fermion, there's some low energy, but still not zero energy degree freedom, yes. Okay, but then the problem is this scalar field, this Higgs field, as you approach this fixed point, uh, becomes effectively a fractal. 
because he uh, has an anomalous dimension. Yes. And that means that the, the typical configurations are certainly not smooth. Yeah. This is a crucial, actually. Thank you for this. When I say long correlation lines, I really mean something more than that. I really mean the smooth fluctuation, no topological defect. So therefore, the short, short distance interaction of the Higgs field should be very strong and make this uh, uh, completely smooth. Not only tail, so I'm not care about the tail. I really care about the, the one light spacing, two light spacing physics, and the, the Higgs field should be smooth at that scale. So therefore, in this simulation, uh, the configuration we generate are really the configuration without a topological defect, without a singularity. Then on the other hand, it's also have a longer correlation length. Yeah, that, that, but that's, a, that's a crucial. So that's why I say smooth fluctuation, not say fluctuation with a long correlation length. Uh, so this one contain a little bit more information. Yeah. So, uh, so here, uh, but uh, to do three plus one D is, uh, is uh, too much. We only have a desktop computer, so we, we cannot do that. So we do this, uh, instead of, we do this uh, one plus one dimensional SU2 chiropromia. We have eight right mover, eight left mover. For eight left mover, we have a four a doublet, this SU2, a two dimensional application of SU2. And for the eight uh, right mover, we have a five singlet and a one triplet. Okay, so that is a, so SU2 is a chiro. Okay. And then we can have a SO3 Higgs field to make those chiro fermion totally massive. And then we consider uh, the fermion pass integral. Uh, given by the determinant of this, uh, this matrix, which is a direct operator plus this uh, Higgs mass term. Okay. And uh, here we assume this uh, Higgs configuration is uh, not constant, but uh, disordered, but uh, smoothly disordered with no topological defect. So the smoothness is uh, carried by this correlation length. So, so when I say correlation length, that's maybe, as uh, Eduardo mentioned, is uh, not uh, very accurate. So this length scale really the the smoothness land scale. So within this land scale, the Higgs field are almost a constant. Okay. And so, but here we, we, we do not sum over different Higgs configuration. We just consider a single Higgs configuration and ask whether fermions are fully gapped or not. So basically we ask whether this, uh, this matrix have eigenvalue near zero or not. And uh, so here it really plot the smallest eigenvalue of this uh, matrix. Uh, as a function of this uh, smooth length scale. <laughs> you know, if, uh, it's an, if it's not smooth, a uh, rough fluctuation, then we say that uh, this uh, delta is very small, so it's a gapless. But uh, however, when, it's, uh, when the smoothness is about uh, six lattice spacing, then we see about uh, the gap, which is one third of a bare gap, you know. With the longer smoothness, the gap getting uh, slightly bigger, okay. And so this is really checking uh, this assumption that uh, uh, for this uh, smooth Higgs field, the fermion remain massive. And uh, so we can integrate out the fermion to obtain the effective uh, nonlinear sigma model of a Higgs theory. Okay, so let's, so, so, so now we turn to this uh, 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 nonlinear sigma model of a Higgs theory. And uh, because the fermion are massive on this uh, smooth background, we can integrate out and uh, so we have a couple uh, equally to left and right in your thank you yeah this is a uh, this is a, a, a something i want to hide <laughs> the simulation actually is a quite a non-trivial it's a much more than what i present here and since you ask so let me say that the simulation is really uh, for this model with a slab okay and uh, so we have a, a higgs field only coupled to this sector but the trouble is that this, uh, this uh, chiral sector is a uh, gapless. So we but, uh, but from the eigenvalue, so from the eigenvector, we know that uh, those uh, gapless uh, eigenvector are near this boundary. So therefore, uh, uh, there's a quite, a, there's a good, good separation. We know which eigenvector from which boundary. So the plot are only for the eigenvector localized on this boundary, and that one have a gap. I see. So uh, otherwise, so we can do this in the larger system. But uh, because we really do in the slab geometry, 
so the computation is uh, pretty heavy actually. And uh, otherwise we can do higher dimension. Yeah. And uh, so the, so, so, so now we are concerning about the, how the Higgs fluctuation uh, can, can induce a symmetric disordered phase. And usually it's emphasized that uh, as Rado as, as point out, the Higgs fluctuation may contain topological defect. And this kind of rough fluctuation would induce a rough disordered phase. So this kind of uh, uh, fluctuation without the top, with the topological defect is called a topological transition, such like a KT transition, because uh, they have a topological defect and topological defect play important role in producing disordered phase. So that's emphasizing uh, this point. Okay. And uh, certainly the rough disordered phase is a, is, a, is a symmetric uh, gap phase, you know, because uh, the rough disorder the phase is uh, in, a Hamiltonian, in, a la, in a Hamiltonian language, the ground state is just a superposition of the Higgs field on each side, the sum over all different orientation and the tensor product, this uh, onside symmetric uh, states, we got the total ground states and it have no topological, this product states is a trivially gapped. So this is uh, no controversy here. And but however, we know that using this rough, in this for this rough disorder, the symmetric phase, the fermion is not happy, and the fermion may become gapless. So therefore, uh, so 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 we cannot do that. So therefore, my concern here is that uh, we should uh, only allow smooth fluctuation. The Higgs field fluctuation should not have uh, any topological defect. So this uh, so therefore the fluctuation without topological defect. It's also called non-topological uh, transition. And, uh, and this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, smooth fluctuation would induce uh, a different disordered phase, we call the smooth disordered phase, where the Higgs field only have a smooth fluctuation without any defect. And uh, certainly there's an issue whether such a smooth disordered phase exists or not, and what are they? It turns out that this smooth disorder phase actually usually have a non-trivial uh, topological order. And in general, let, let, me, let, let, let me see, let, let me just see, let's, let, let's, let me just give a very general picture and uh, then we'll have a more deep discussion on this point. You know, for, uh, for one thing, in this smooth disorder phase, because there is no topological defect. So therefore the topology of a targeted space the topology of a target space matters. You know, different topology of a target space may give rise to different smooth disordered phase. Because the topology of a target space matters, then the topological term matters. You know, when you have a rough fluctuation, the topology of a target does not matter. So topological term does not matter actually, but in the, for the smooth fluctuation, it matters. So there's a concern that uh, this non-trivial topology of a target space may have a non-trivial topological term, which prevent us, uh, which prevent a sim symmetry, uh, which pre prevent the symmetric phase to be gapped. Maybe this topological term make a symmetric phase gapless because there's a phase fluctuation. And for example, we know that uh, uh, one of uh, non-trivial topological term is a Westminster Witten term, and that have a potential to make a symmetric disorder phase gapless. Okay. And also even when the, even when the symmetric phase is gapped and those topological term or maybe non-trivial topology may make this symmetric phase have a topological order. So therefore this kind of a fluctuation without topological defect would induce a phase transition which may change topological order. So this is my statement that a non-topological transition is usually topological transition. But uh, the point that uh, this uh, first topological means a uh, topological defect. And the second topological means a uh, topological order. And uh, so the fluctuation with the topological defect would induce a phase transition, uh, which do not change the topological order. But uh, however, the fluctuation with the without the topological defect would uh, induce transition that change topological order. So that is a, a, a point. 
I want to make here. Okay, so, so let's try to uh, expand this point and go into this. And, uh, and so, uh, uh, so if you want to be lazy, you know, you say, we say if the, if the targeted space have a trivial topology, if a targeted space have a trivial topology, then none of those concerns would, uh, would appear. So actually that is, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, my assumption uh, in this uh, uh, 2013 paper. I really taking a very conservative and a very lazy approach. I just assume this uh, targeted space have a trivial topology, and uh, there's a there's a no topological term, no Westing no term, and there is no topological defect because target space have a trivial topology, and uh, so so none of those concerns can happen. So then I assume then the the symmet the smooth fluctuation can induce this uh, uh disorder symmetry phase, which have a trivial topological order, which has product space. So so there's a uh, so there's a uh, uh, no problem. Okay, but uh, certainly uh, uh, this uh, assumption that uh, using smooth fluctuation to induce a symmetric phase, symmetric disorder phase, this is still a non-trivial assumption, which I don't have a, uh, I don't have a more to offer uh, uh, at the moment. And uh, probably we still uh, need uh, this uh, a numerical calculation uh, to do that. But this problem had nothing to do with the fermion. It's just a bosonic nonlinear sigma model. Uh, can we do that? Yeah. Uh, in some sense, I thought this is common sense we can do that. But on the other hand, uh, this may be also wishful thinking. But we do. We, I, I do feel that we, we need this uh, uh, numerical calculation to do that. But uh, in the, but in next, I try to deform. Uh, I try to deform this problem a little, little bit, then provide uh, uh, an analytic evidence to show that. This uh, smooth uh, uh, fluctuation can induce a symmetric uh, gap phase, a disordered gap phase. Uh, by by modifying this problem a little bit, then I can provide an, an analytic uh, argument. And this argument actually works much beyond this assumption. Even, even when the targeted space have a non-trivial topology, uh, this uh, still works. The smooth fluctuation can still induce uh, a disordered phase, even when the target space have a non-trivial topology. So we don't need this assumption at all, actually. So this, uh, this analytic uh, evidence is, uh, is, uh, is done by ignoring the symmetry. We know the target space is symmetric space, but here we just uh, step back a little bit. We say, we say the target space is a manifold which may not be symmetric space. So we just ignore the symmetry, we just have a some arbitrary uh, targeted space with some, some topology. Uh, but we don't worry too much about the symmetry. We don't worry about the symmetry. Okay. And uh, now we ask for this uh, generic nonlinear state model, what a smooth uh, disordered, do we have a smooth disordered ground state? Uh, which is a superposition of a smooth configuration. That's a map from the space uh, to the target space. And this map only smooth with no defect. Whether this uh, smooth uh, superposition uh, can be a valid uh, ground state? That is a, uh, that's a question. Excuse and, me. Uh, uh, yeah. So on this slide, do you have any global symmetry or it's just- No, we don't worry about the symmetry. So here we ignore the symmetry. Okay. We're just thinking about whether smooth fluctuation can produce a disordered state or not. So the obstruction to that would be like, West Sumino Witten type terms or? Uh, yes, yeah, they could, they could be, but uh, there could be other abstractions, you know, we don't know. So that, that is the concern. Uh, can we have a abstraction for that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And uh, to make this problem rigorous, uh, I'll go to a lattice model because field theory, there's a UV, UV completion problem. So we go to a lattice model where I triangulate both the space time and the target space, both M and K are triangulated, okay. And then this particular function became a finite sum. This finite sum is sum over the map from the triangulated space time to triangulated target space, okay. And this map have a fancy name. It's called the homomorphism between the triangulation or between the 
uh, 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 simplex or complex in the more mathematical term. Um, by which I really mean that this map is a particular map, which is map vertex to vertex, edge to edge, and also map the two vertex which are linked by the edge to two vertex which are linked by the edge in a targeted space. Okay, so this kind of structure, the linkage between vertex and the edge, and the linkage between edge and a triangle are preserved under this map. And this is really the meaning of a smooth fluctuation or the no defect. So when this, uh, this uh, map is a map, it's a homomorphism between simple or complex. That means this map have a no disorder, no defect. So that's the meaning of a no defect. Okay, so, so in this case, uh, uh, we can make this problem uh, uh, more rigorous so we can discuss more rigorously. But however, uh, there is a problem about the definition of disordered phase. You know, when you have a symmetry, the ordered phase is symmetry breaking, disordered phase is symmetric, we can define that way. But uh, without symmetry, how to define disordered phase? A little bit tricky. And uh, to do that, uh, we need to introduce this uh, homotopic uh, class. Okay. So that is uh, uh, this map. We have a two map from this uh, uh, space time to target space. And this two map is a homotopic equivalent. If this two map uh, can be extended uh, to the map from space time times the segment and to the target space times the segment. So that on the two boundary of this, uh, this, of this segment, uh, this map become a phi one and a phi two. And then uh, on this whole extended map is a homomorphism which preserve the triangulation structure. So that is a homotopic uh, class. Then with this definition of homotopic class, uh, we can define the partition function, which, is, which is for the single class, which we only do pass integral, we only sum over the configuration in a single uh, uh, class. So we have this partition function for the single class. Then we can define a disordered phase. The non linear single model uh, is in a disordered phase. If the absolute value of this partition function for each uh, homotopic class, is a uh, is the same, so that means uh, uh, each homotopic class have the same weight uh, in the fluctuation. They are equally likely. So this is a uh, 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 the sense of a disordered phase. Okay, and uh, so uh, so then we ask, can we design this nonlinear sigma model so that to to using only the smooth fluctuation to realize uh, the disordered phase? Defined this way, there's all the homotopic class appear with an equal uh, weight. And the answer is yes. The key point actually is the following. Uh, we need to choose a very special triangulation of, uh, of this targeted space. And this uh, triangulation have only one vertex. It's a single vertex triangulation. And uh, to be more precise, this uh, triangulation is a very special uh, simplex or complex called the simplexual set. And uh, for this very special triangulation, and, uh, uh, which is done in, actually in this paper, and uh, uh, this model can be solved exactly in a sense, we can we just take Lagrange equal to zero. <laughs> and, uh, and then we can configuration for each, uh, for each homotopic uh, uh, class, it's the same. The same number of configuration for each uh, homotopic class. And, uh, uh, and so, so in this way, uh, uh, we conclude that uh, this uh, discrete nonlinear scheme model can have a smooth uh, disordered phase for any target space with any topology. Okay, so this is a uh, 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 this is a uh, 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 one result of this paper. Okay, and uh, so what is this a smooth disordered phase? What is this a smooth disordered phase? This is smooth disorder phase. Let's assume Lagrange equal to zero because this is a finite lattice model. So Lagrange equal to zero, the, the, we can still compute the partition function, which gave us a, the ultimate uh, disordered phase. Okay. And I just want to make a comment that if you choose other triangulation, the number of configuration in different homotopic class are different. And uh, sometimes the number of configuration in a trivial homotopic class we are near phi equal to constant is the largest. So this is a phase space configuration, a consideration 
make the system to be in the ordered state, which is roughly phi equal to constant phase. So, so picking some special translation is uh, uh, pretty important for this argument. Okay, but uh, in this case, uh, we find that uh, if a target space have a trivial topology, then as I mentioned that uh, uh, this uh, disordered phase uh, uh, is a trivial product state have a uh, no topologic order. If a target space have a non-trivial pi one, which is a finite group, this could be non-abelian, but the trivial pi two, pi three, and etc. Then this a smooth disordered phase actually have a non-trivial topology order described by the G gauge theory. Okay. If a target space have non-trivial pi two, which is abelian group, but a trivial other uh, uh, pi, and then uh, this is smooth disorder phase will also have a non-trivial topology order, which are described by two gauge theory with a gauge group A. Okay. In general, for any target space, the topology order is described by a higher gauge theory. And uh, it's a twisted combination of uh, one gauge theory with a gauge group pi one, two gauge theory with a gauge group pi two, and a three gauge theory with a gauge group pi three. And uh, those gauge group uh, also have non-trivial coupling, which I mean the twist. And so, so in general, this uh, the smooth disorder phase of a nonlinear sigma model actually is a higher gauge theory. And the number of configuration in each class actually is a number of uh, uh, gauge transformation. So that's uh, the argument why each, each class are the same. And uh, so this uh, pass integral basically is summing over a uh, gauge uh, transformations. Okay. And the partition function will not change, will not change. And uh, this, in, this, in this language, this uh, target space K actually mathematically is called a classifying space of this uh, higher group. It's a higher gauge theory, it's a gauge theory of higher group. And this K is a classifying space of this higher group. So, so therefore, so this discussion is really linked uh, to the discussion of a higher uh, gauge theory, which is also very popular. Uh, and also higher symmetry is, a, is, a, uh, is became very active a field uh, recent years. Okay. And uh, so if, uh, if you do have a, a, a topological term, if you do have a, a top, if L not equal to zero, means that we have some topological term, okay? And for example, if a target space is S2 in one plus one dimension, uh, we have a Euro uh, SO3 non say model and some kind of Euro topological theta term. So this is a Euro topological theta term. So those are, those are kind of topological term uh, uh, mentioned, okay? And uh, then, then what happens? Then in this case, the smooth disorder phases still exist, uh, provided that all those pi are finite. Uh, you know, for S2, the pi two is infinite. So things are a little bit tricky, okay. And, uh, but uh, if a pi are all finite, all these homotopic all finite, and then, then we still have a smooth disorder phase, even in the presence of a topological term. And in this case, uh, the, the topology order uh, for this uh, smooth di disordered phase is a so-called twisted higher gauge theory, okay? And which is analog of a diagram witten theory, which is twisted the uh, uh, gauge theory uh, by cocycles. And the higher gauge theory can also, also be twisted uh, if this uh, Lagrangian is uh, uh, non-trivial, it's a topological term. It turns out that uh, this, uh, this uh, topological term is uh, classified uh, by, by this uh, uh, by this uh, 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 co-cycle, uh, 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 by co-cycle uh, on this uh, target space. And uh, if you're engaging this uh, 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 higher gauge theory, uh, actually uh, we get uh, the SPD phase, uh, which protect by the higher symmetry, which also classified by this co-cycle uh, in, uh, in this uh, uh, class classifying uh, space. But that's just a side remark. Uh, so, so but here I want to, the point here I want to say that uh, actually smooth disordered phase exists even when the, even when this uh, 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 target space have a non-trivial topology and even when we have a topological term, <laughs> okay. And so that means uh, our previous, previous assumption is uh, too conservative. 
and uh, we have a we can relax that consumption and uh, get a better uh, condition. And uh, so this really uh, led to this uh, the fifth the fifth proposal. So in this case, uh, compared to fourth proposal, and we still uh, require there's a Higgs mass term, which can gap off all the chiral fermions. Okay, but however, we do not require this uh, symmetric space symmetric space to have a trivial topology. Okay, we do not require that at all at all, but we do require that after integrate out in uh, massive fermions. The resulting nonlinear sigma model for the Higgs field have no West Umino term. Okay, we require that. And this basically is anomaly. So this is the presence of West Umino term uh, is a signature of anomaly. Okay, uh, either perturbative or global anomaly. Okay, and so, so that's a, that's a require, uh, require that. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, but if you're lazy, you don't know how to, how to compute. Uh, this West Union term, which is not a trivial calculation, and we can we can have a, a stronger relation. We just say this is a pi uh, d plus two of a target space of trivial, because the West Union term require a uh, uh, non-trivial uh, a, a homotopy uh, uh, at this level uh, to appear. Okay, if this is trivial, then there is no West Union Witten term, and then everything is a uh, uh, is a uh, uh, this okay. But certainly, integral in massive fermion may generate uh, other uh, uh, lower level topological term. But uh, unlike the Wilson term, those lower level topological terms are local. So that can be canceled by adding some counter terms. We just adding counter term in the Higgs uh, Lagrangian just to cancel those, uh, those terms. And uh, so in this case, uh, the smooth fluctuation without topological defect can still induce disordered phase if I believe the argument I provided. And uh, so that's really uh, the motivation of this uh, 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 a better uh, condition. But certainly I want to uh, caution that uh, the argument I just discussed ignore the symmetry. And so, uh, uh, so there's still a logical gap, uh, whether when we include symmetry, the, the, the symmetric disorder the phase uh, can still exist uh, or not. Okay, yeah, that's basically the, the main thing of the first part. And uh, uh, any question here? Yeah. So, Xiao Gang, um, yeah. the question about the statement that uh, if, the, say, the pi one of the target space is finite group G, do you mean that you necessarily end up with a G gauge theory when yes. you drive it into a symmetric disorder phase? Exactly. That's a very, very good comment. Uh, we, here we require all the pi to be finite because if they are not finite, uh, we may encounter uh, some gauge group with an infinite number of uh, infinite gauge group, yeah, you know. And the dynamics of those larger gauge group, uh, uh, I, don't, I, 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 have not, I have not think, thought about that very carefully. So, uh, so, I, I, so to be safe, I, I require uh, pi to be finite. But certainly if a pi not be finite, uh, that's the very, very interesting case. And uh, uh, that's may involve in gapless phase. And uh, uh, yeah, that's maybe some very future research direction. That's, that's really very, very interesting. Yeah, I, I just did not thought about that very carefully. Yeah, but just a uh, no follow up. Um, do you imply that no, the, the only symmetric gap phase the only symmetric disorder phase is a gauge series. There's no way to get like a complete trivial. Oh yeah, this is a, yeah, indeed I do, I do imply that. And so this is really argument. That's a nonlinear sigma model have a symmetric, have a smooth disorder phase. And here I argue that if a pi is finite, all those smooth disorder phase are gapped and they are really higher gauge theory. I do imply that, yeah. I see. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, so that, but the key is that this uh, one vertex triangulation would make this argument uh, rigorous. Uh, 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 but but the other, but for other triangulation, we can we, whether we can adjust this weight of a Lagrangian to balance out its phase space because for other triangulation, the different homotopy class have a different number of configuration. 
And then we need to using some kind of a, a Lagrangian to balancing that out. But I don't know whether that's possible or not. So this is an open question. I, I don't know. I have not uh, think of that carefully. Yeah. Uh, I I wonder maybe it's a little bit backward, but still, uh, when you have this uh, uh, effective mass for uh, say uh, Miller fermions or whatever, uh, how this um, you know kind of appearance of effective mass uh, depends on on a uh, uh, lattice spacing. So when we are going to the small, uh, the limit of spacing, so this uh, this gap goes to infinity, or you know, or it's very uh, very, very, very good point. Okay, so let, let me make that comment. It's very important. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so here in the, in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, slab construction, uh, this a uh, state this uh, model in one higher dimension uh, have this uh, mass gap have this gap or a mass. Uh, which is the same order as a lattice spacing. A is a lattice spacing, okay. And, uh, and uh, here I say we have this uh, smooth uh, fluctuation. So there's some kind of smooth fluctuation that's a C. okay. And it's very important that this uh, a C is it's a kind of a larger than lattice spacing. For example, it's a 10 times a lattice spacing, okay. So that means that uh, the mass gap of the mirror sector, the mass of a mirror sector, you know, uh, it's about uh, maybe uh, one tenth of the mass in the bulk, or, mm -hmm. or one tenth of this gap. So then maybe not one tenth, maybe one hundredth, but something find a number. Yeah. But it, but it doesn't depend on, on spacing in the limit of. No, the spacing way. is explicit here. A is the lattice spacing. Then you can take yeah. a limit. You know, I write down everything explicitly. You know, this M is a, is a, the M is a one tenth of a one over lattice spacing A. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so I write down everything explicitly. So you can take a limit. Then using this explicit expression, you can take a limit you want. No, no, I, I understand. But look, but then say uh, in the limit of small A, uh, we, uh, this still goes to uh, to infinity, right? So, so it means yeah. This, but in the, in, fact, uh, in the sense which is uh, the mirror fermion mass gap always a uh, ten times less than the bulk gap. In, yeah, in, you know, and this but but then the reason I'm wondering because that if uh, I can take this limit of small a, then uh, uh, the question would be that why I would not uh, in continuous limit in continuum limit, right? Then it could be. Uh, as, uh, evidence of existence of uh, possible regularization, right? Uh, yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, and we know that there is no regulator in uh, kind of which we can formulate in continuum limits. Uh, that's why I'm trying to find out kind of bridge between these statements. Very, 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 very good point. And uh, here, uh, here we provide a regulator using a particular lattice model. Okay. And also from this lattice model, we see that uh, this uh, particular lattice model have a uh, provide a different regulator because uh, this boundary can be in a different topological phase, have a yeah. different topology order. So that really says that uh, a regulator is not unique. There's a uh, many, many regulator which have a, have a different topological effect. Okay. So if you ignore this uh, lattice structure, just uh, thinking there is a universal continuum regulator, you may have a trouble. Because yeah. the, the, the point of view from lattice model tell us uh, for those model, there are different equivalent regulator, which actually have a low energy effect. In a sense, uh, if you compatify this Cairo Fermion theory uh, uh, in, the, in the compact space, uh, this sector may provide a different ground state degeneracy, even though they are messy, but they provide a different ground state degeneracy. And different topology order, uh, so there is a there is some kind of residual low energy effect, but it do not affect low energy mode. You know the low energy effect only some kind of different uh, degeneracy at this level. You know, yeah. and uh, so therefore uh, the uh, the 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 attempt to using continuum regulator without thinking about the lattice may overlook those uh, possible mm -hmm. distinct topology which are really there. And uh, then one could not get answered that way. 
No, it's, uh, it's very interesting because it, it would imply that essentially uh, we are in situation where uh, kind of uh, continuum confirmation may, maybe it's impossible, but uh, but your regulator still would work, right? No, in some sense, I would say this a lattice regulation is a wonderful continuum regulation. But uh, what I want to say, there's a actually there's a more details. We have to provide this reg regulator with the more details, yeah. and then we they realize this the different regulator are used actually in equivalent. Yeah, that, that's that's that, okay. uh, that okay. I want Thank to you. emphasize. Yeah. Thank okay. you. May I ask something? Uh, yeah, sure. Suppose you uh, turn on your gauge fields and you arrange for them to be an approximation to an instant of. Would the integral over the fermions be exactly zero, small, or anything? Uh... Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I have not thought about this, but, uh, but I want to say the following. And, uh, you know, this boundary is a gap, it's massive. Okay. The question still stands. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, but, but, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, but, but I, want to make, I want to make a point. Okay. Usually, this sector is a mirror section, massive decouple. And when you have a gauge configuration, that means uh, because here have a symmetry G, we can, uh, we can gauge the symmetry and have a non-trivial uh, uh, symmetry twist, like Eastern Town uh, boundary condition. And that this symmetry twist will couple to the chiral fermion uh, sector, which is uh, like Eastern effect. But the point I want to make is that uh, this massive oh, okay. fermion also couple non-trivially to the gauge twist. And, uh, and we know that it have a non-trivial contribution to the partition function uh, because those are topology order with the symmetry. And when you have a symmetry twist, this topology order with the symmetry even though have a gap, but have a non-trivial contribution uh, with a symmetry twist. Uh, so therefore, uh, consider a uh, chiropharmion alone uh, in the background of a, a, a gauge, non-trivial gauge configuration, maybe not enough, we have to supply this uh, massive sector. And the different the massive sector may provide a different uh, results. I have not studied this uh, carefully, but uh, at least this uh, one thing concern that uh, this uh, massive mirror fermion have a non-trivial contribution uh, in a non-trivial gauge configuration. And uh, so we have really considered this uh, slab. So it won't be zero. Yeah. It won't be zero. If I integrate out the chiral fermions in the presence of a background gauge field, which is an approximation to an instanton, you will not get zero. Oh, you could get a zero if there's a near- you could. Uh, if We are speaking zero about zero an mode. exact zero, not 10 to the minus 20. Uh, on the last theory, I'm not sure you can have well, a, this has been the crucial, a crucial part of the part of this work in lattice gauge theory on the subject. Yeah. Uh, let I mean, me see. I, I don't know. Yeah. What this I'm suggesting a, you should be aware of it. Yeah. And by uh, the way, uh, I have always declined yeah. to review your papers. So whatever they wrote, it's not me. No, I, I, it doesn't matter. It's really that's a, you know, I, I'm not bothered by this negative comment. Really, it's also the, well, you brought it the, up the, in a, in a the, talk. I, but I, I, it's not the normal place to to no. come with your three reports. But I understand your feeling, and I just want to clarify. Yeah, it's not me. No, <laughs> it's it's really the. Sometimes I, I I do know that sometimes uh, non-trivial last model you can have exact zero mode, and sometimes you can have a very very. I, I don't hear you. And, uh, not... It may depend on the situation. Yeah. Hello. I speak to the microphone as well, and I missed some of the things you said. Is your sound working? Yeah, my sound working. <laughs> 
But we think zero here in the some other people's eye call. Very, very sick. But it's not going to be exactly zero as long as it's fine. Hello? Uh, yeah, no, this is I, the one. I hear you. Well, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I tried to turn off my microphone in the assumption that something with me, but it's not. Yeah, okay, yeah. So so basically you are not sure what happens in the background of an instance. Huh? Yeah, I, I, I'm not so sure. Uh, really because, uh, uh, but I, I got to say that I, I know that a certain latent model in certain case can give you eyes to exact zero, but some other case gave you exponentially close to, to zero in a exponential in the size of system size. And okay. uh, so I'm not sure. I, I believe this, uh, this Cariformian, if uh, in the Eastern time, it should have a, a zero as a euro, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm not so sure whether this zero is the exact zero or or oh, this uh, exponential zero, uh, which became zero in the large system size limit, uh, that part. Well, sure. Yeah, okay. Um, so the, you could ask this question just about uh, a global symmetry situation like in QCD where you have exactly massless quarks um, and you put a background which is uh, represents an instant on, as you know, uh, you are on a torus in four dimensions. It admits non-trivial yeah. uh, topological, fermion topological charge, you know, FF dual integrated over it is, will it be in, uh, integral? The integral of, I mean, would you, the fermions can give you a definition of of the topological charge, right? From that year single. Yeah. Would you get exact integers or would you get approximations? Using the, you know. Yeah, I think it's a, okay. The, the, it's a little bit of difficult to answer this question. The fall, it's a falling, you know, uh, this chiral fermion effect at a low energy is a nearly non-interacting. So one, one still has this uh, a determinant of operator to compute under this uh, Fermi zero mode and etc. Right. However, so at a high energy, at a high energy, uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, Fermi field became strongly interacting. So therefore, the pass integral is no longer given by the determinant of operator. It's a something no. much more. Sorry, we're thinking about you know when you learn field theory, you start with free theory and then you do the external field yes, prop. Yes. We are talking about external field problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so oh. this this lower part, yeah, this we I mean isolated to this uh, this low energy uh, non interacting part. Uh, I I would say that the uh, the uh, this uh, this previous consideration in field theory uh, should all follow. So I, I didn't. Are these a previous you are waiting, consideration for field theory? The or you just are not. Uh, will it, it won't be. It won't. Will it be? It won't be exact zero in your case. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I have to say I don't All right. know. Okay. Also, this, uh, uh, I just want to, yeah. This is this a little bit. Uh, this a little bit. Uh, uh tricky. Uh, okay. In the field theory, if you if you really take continuum limit, you just do field theory, then just ordinary field theory without a direct operator. But uh, but then one may concern that uh, this uh, field theory consideration is uh, uh, you know may maybe uh, uh, we want to make that more rigorous to put things on the lattice. Uh, but then but the way we put things on the lattice is by including interactions, and so we have to separate from the lattice model of non-interacting part which you can consider determinant of some operator. And that part is a little bit non-trivial. Uh, so that's, that's my hesitation, yeah. Well, right. but, but you know, it feeds in when you think about the fully interacting theory, if you have these other guys, 
which have to decouple, you have to make sure that they really decouple in the sense that the continuum limit will be just the target theory and nothing else. Yes, that I, I, I say uh, affirmatively. The continuum theory is uh, what you expected, nothing else. But however, the massive factor do not completely decouple. The reason is that uh, the continuum theory we concern about are more, mainly about the mode and those mode uh, uh, decouple. But however, if you consider more detailed global structure of a continuum theory, like a ground state degeneracy, uh, you know, beyond those uh, massless mode, then that part is affected by the massive sector. They do not completely decouple. If the universe is finite, we can talk about the ground state degeneracy right. uh, uh, beyond this uh, massless mode. You know, the mass mode has very tiny gap of one over universal size. But the below is a tiny gap. There may be additional degeneracy which are exponential, uh, small in the universe size. Well, and degeneracy is affected yeah. by this massive sector. So in that sense, they are not decoupled. But if you only think about this gapless mode as a fuel theory, then they decouple. Yeah. It is just that I, what I believe is true right now in terms of things that have been done and are no longer, you know, hoax, but yeah. yeah. So, so well, indeed, I, I don't say this. Just, a just let me finish. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you sorry. Cannot, there is no, no uh, proven way, numerically at least, and also in some exact statements you can make, there is no proven way that I know of to do a partition function formulation, not a Hamiltonian formulation, a partition yeah. function formulation, uh, so a four dimensional for the real world, which okay. simultaneously has strictly, strictly short interact, short uh, finite range interactions and uh, does the other good things that we need. In, in particular, having exact zeros in an instant. So, yeah, I agree, yeah. So, and I understood, from the little I understood from your papers, it seemed that you said you have a Hamiltonian formulation, which, which uh, because of the non-locality in all four directions, you do not really have a clean one in the partition version. But you said, I thought, I read in your all the papers that you do have a precise Hamiltonian formulation, which at least means that in the time direction you are local. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so but, actually, in, in in my paper, in some sense, what, what we have <laughs> is kind of proposal. We have a we have a designed uh, uh, Hamiltonian or uh, Lagrangian, uh, which we hope. Uh, to have those uh, desired uh, property. But yeah. however, uh, those, uh, those uh, conclusions are based on some argument I just present in this talk. And uh, you know, I feel those argument is okay. But on the other hand, strictly speaking, uh, those arguments need to be uh, test. They are not really rigorous uh, proof. And uh, you know, he, in this talk, I try to separate those different argument and I try to see uh, each of the weakness and to see what kind of uh, additional work need to be done to make those, uh, uh, to confirm or disprove uh, those uh, argument. Uh, okay, in particular, so this uh, smooth fluctuation can induce a disordered phase uh, is uh, at the moment it's a assumption, which although I believe it, but, uh, but one do need uh, in some new marks for the symmetric right. space to show that's indeed the case. So that's a one, one part of a weakness. Let, let me maybe for the sake yeah. of uh, continue the seminar. Maybe we can wait a bit for till the end because the okay. there's no, I think I, I think I finished. I, I don't I don't want to cover more. Yeah, no, there's, a, more. there's a there's a more top so. anomaly, but uh, maybe I think uh, uh, we already have very good discussion, uh, so maybe we're already right. beyond the time. Well, yeah. well I, I do I do think it's more fruitful if the yeah, yeah if but I think we'll stop here because uh, that, that's all right. A, that's too much. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, and that's almost not the finish in the state statement. Yeah, yeah. There's a whether there's a. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a more fruitful to to if other questions we can you, discuss questions. You, you know. probably should uh, go through what you want to say later part of the talks. I think. I think you probably only finish. No, I already ten minutes beyond. Uh, so oh. so maybe let's right. give so, this time to questions rather than goodbye. Uh, present more things. Yeah. Goodbye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Are we allowed to ask questions now, or yeah, well, please, yeah. Juven, what, what's the status now? Well, I'm disappointed by many things, but uh, uh, I do encourage Shogun. I apologize for disappointing you, but are we allowed to ask questions? There's nothing allowed to ask, but I was disappointed in the plan the Shogun gave. Anyway, so uh, feel free to ask questions, but I do encourage Shogun to at least go through what you prepare to say, because the the talk hasn't been finished. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I, you know, but uh, but uh, because uh, I I really feel feel uh, feel good because we have very good discussion, and uh, hopefully uh, 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 some issue is clarified, uh, at least the problem clarified. Uh, really, because of time uh, issue, you know, you know, the anomaly would is a, a, another new directions, and uh, uh, so in light of time, uh, I prefer not to talk about that. Uh, maybe Juven, if you have a time, maybe you can talk talk about that, talk about that later. Yeah, but I really hope maybe this is we should be using this time for the more discussion and a question. Okay, so uh, people, please feel free to ask question. But maybe some if, in case more question, you can raise your hands. But Nati, you should go first, please. So what I'm trying to get the big picture. What's your goal here? Option one, the continuum theory is not well defined and you're trying to give a definition for it. Option two, the continuum theory is well defined and you try to give a way to perform calculations. Now, the model in the end of the day is quite complicated. You add a lot of degrees of freedom. So should we take these extra degrees of freedom literally? Is, is your vision that the continuum theory must be supplemented with this core package of degrees of freedom, or this is just the best you could come up with and somebody else might do a better job with fewer extra degrees of freedom. So in other words, yeah. how literally should we take the continuum theory as a way of defining the theory? Very good point, yes. And uh, you know, originally my goal, I think your sec second option, we just want to perform a calculation of uh, some continuum field theory, okay. And then certainly uh, the result is pretty complicated, as you pointed out. And uh, so, uh, so whether it's a practical or not, I don't know. And, uh, but, uh, but on the other hand, uh, but the result also reveal that maybe the issue is, could be your first option. That's uh, actually how actually define a continuing field theory. And as I mentioned that, uh, uh, here is revealed that a different uh, regulation of continuum field theory, although gave rise to the same uh, low energy mode, but a certain global property uh, may be different, like a grounds to the degeneracy, which is also low energy, but uh, they are only global degree freedom. And, uh, and that's appear to be necessary and uh, uh, to have this uh, some non-trivial global degree freedom for certain continuum theory, uh, this is necessary uh, for the theory to be well defined. And this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, global property have an experimental uh, uh, effect. That means that uh, uh, some kind of heavy particle or caustic stream and those kind of topological defect may be different. So, the, so basically that's try, try, to, try to say that uh, a different uh, a regulation may provide a different topological uh, order in the mirror sector and this topological order in the mirror sector may, may have a different uh, vortex line or different uh, heavy particle multiple and uh, things like that. And uh, so- Shogun, a standard old fashioned continuum field theorist like me would simply say that this is a different continuum field theory. It's not the same continuum field theory. In some sense, yes. Then, then that would be a different continuum field theory. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so basically, you say that uh, there's a certain, you know, 
certain very low energy continuum field theory may have to carry some higher energy sector which have certain properties. And, uh, and I think recently, I, I think uh, 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 Daviti uh, Gaiotto uh, mentioned that uh, there are certain equivalents of a continuum theory. Basically, it's like this picture that uh, we may have a different uh, topology order on this part. And uh, then, then those continuum fields, so those carrier Fermion theory may be equivalent in that sense, even though they have different uh, topology sector in the mirror sector. And, uh, and those uh, theory are equivalent in certain sense, but also inequivalent in the sense there are some heavy object uh, different. And uh, so this really a uh, result of the requirement that uh, this uh, continuum field theory have uh, some kind of lattice model regulation. So if you require, if you uh, think- I'm this sorry, I principle. think you're mixing. One thing is how you regularize the theory. Yes. This is one interesting question and a totally yeah. unrelated question is the properties of the theory at long distances. This, these are really two separate questions. Yeah. And I thought that if you change the number of ground states in finite volume, this is yeah. a different theory. Maybe different boundary okay. conditions or something, but it's a different theory. Yes, yeah. This is totally unrelated to what happens at high energies, how you regularize it and so forth. I'm surprised that the need to regularize gives you more options in that. So it, it's somehow all these different issues are discussed together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in that sense, I will say uh, the following. Uh, using continuum field theory, you want to recover, recover low energy mode and recover ground state degeneracy, you know, even at a scale less than one over L, L is the system size. If you require continuum, theory, continuum field theory to do that, then for certain case, we cannot do that. And in a sense, we have to regulate the continuum field theory and to really provide the answer uh, uh, to the ground state degeneracy. Then we find a different regulation of the same continuum field theory may have a different answer. And then in your definition, that should be regarded as a different continuum field theory. Uh, so I can take, uh, actually I myself taking that point of view that the low energy physics should include the ground state degeneracy. And then, then, in, then if, I, if I using this point of view, I will say certain continuum field theory is not completely well defined, which need a UV completion to make them completely well defined. Uh, so maybe that's a one message. Just to drive the message home, yeah. uh, the simplest, topological field theory in two plus one dimension is say U1 level two. That's the simplest. And it has some number of ground states along the torus, it has two states. It's clearly different than the trivial theory that has only one ground state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's so true. these are different continuum theories. And then there's a separate question, what happens at high energies? And there might be some scalar fields at high energy, it could be all sorts of things. But but somehow these two issues are really unrelated. Yeah. And I uh, don't think depending on how you regularize the theory in the UV, you're going to change the ground state degeneracy. That goes okay. against everything that Wilson and others taught us. Yeah, that is a very good point. Uh, like, uh, at least uh, let, me, let me say that. Say for the Cairo-Fermion theory or for certain continuum theory, we thought we know ground state degeneracy. But the once we do this UV regulation, we find this mirror sector can also provide, sometimes has to have an additional ground state degeneracy. And in that case, uh, uh, I would say, I don't know what to say, but that, that can happen. Certainly if a mirror sector have a trivial topological order, then what you said is okay. That is uh, the field theory completely determine the low energy phys physics including ground state degeneracy. But however, for certain chiral Fermion theory, although it can be put on lattice, but with a non-trivial mirror sector. And then in that case, uh, uh, the mirror sector have an additional contribution to ground state degeneracy. And then in that sense, maybe the field theory should be, we say the regulated field theory is different than the original field theory. Or we can say the original field theory is not well defined. Uh, it should depend on your position, so I, I don't know what to say. So, so let's take a, a concrete example just to drive the message home. We take one vile fermion 
in one plus one dimensions, one left moving wild fermion. It's a complex yeah. fermion, no right movers. Okay. It suffers from all the problems you mentioned. It has a gravitational anomaly, it has a yeah. global U1 symmetry with an anomaly in the U1, and you will not be able to regularize it in a standard one plus one dimensional lattice. Yeah, Having yeah. said that, this problem is completely solvable. We know the ground state degeneracy, we know everything we want to know about that. We have periodic boundary conditions. We have two states. One is a boson, one is a fermion. Everything is known and calculable about this theory. So I okay. don't really see, I don't really see what the UV regularization and the slab and all that has to do with it. Okay, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, this is a, uh, let, 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 let me try to see. Uh, uh, I think that here is that, uh, uh, if you want to couple the, I don't know whether the, the, this problem, if you couple this uh, uh, model with some background you know, with a defect, whether there should be an uh, issue. And uh, there's no problem so, in coupling so, this model to any background. Yeah. And uh, really, I'm thinking, yeah, that's the point. I'm thinking about this. Uh, uh, Yeah, couple, certain capital smooth background, maybe there's some problem. But uh, I'm thinking maybe maybe that's also no problem. I'm certainly thinking about this. Uh, if in a space time we have a this non-trivial uh, U1 bound where the gauge field is not globally defined, it's maybe still okay. And uh, yeah, so, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that, that's part I'm not so familiar. So with, this uh, problem was beaten to death by physicists, yeah, by yeah. mathematicians. It's completely yeah. rigorous on any background with a met any metric and any background gauge okay. field. It has an anomaly, it's fully understood. Everything is yeah. calculable. They're, they're close for formulas for all these things. This is despite the fact that we do not know how to regularize it in a satisfactory way. I, I see what you mean. Uh, so basically you'll say that uh, uh, whether there is a way, even, even not knowing regulation, uh, there is a way uh, to define those uh, uh, field theory and uh, uh, including all the topological uh, property. Yeah, yeah. S sorry, yeah, yeah. No, in, in I understand. You, need to regularize. you need to regularize because the, not, there's an infinite number of eigenvalues for the yeah. eigenstates, for the eigenvectors for the Laplacian and so forth or for the Dirac operator. Okay. But there are lots of regularizations other than the lattice, and they make sense. Yes. Even okay. the mathematicians who, you know, who are very rigorous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's completely well. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, so thank and, you for the question. You don't yeah. have to say to get into this whole thing of adding a slab and there are degrees of freedom at the other end of the world and changing the ground state degeneracy. This is way, way too complicated. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So the uh, yeah this is yeah this is really a, a very good point. And uh, so the, the so here I really is really there's an issue here that is a uh, if this a particular lattice regulation show that uh, the lattice regulation have some kind of a, have to have a certain low energy sector, but uh, somehow this a continuum some other continuum uh, regulation uh, not think about the lattice. Uh, seems more universal also uh, provide, maybe provide a different answer. And then, then, then there's a tension. Yeah, there's a tension, uh, I, I want to say that. Uh, uh, so how to make sense or compare uh, these two uh, regulation? You know, the lattice regulation uh, require that the, the, the UV computer theory have some kind of a, a localness and uh, and, uh, and requiring this uh, localness uh, would uh, imply that uh, ground state degeneracy or some, some global property, some non-trivial global property. And uh, maybe there are some uh, continuum regulation do not require this, uh, uh, don't have this uh, uh, property. Then that will be, uh, uh, I would say that will be really an uh, 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 interesting issue. That is, uh, uh, there's a different way uh, to, to regulate, to define the theory then with a different, maybe let's say experimental uh, consequence. And uh, so, so then, then, then there's a question about uh, do you need a uh, ultra local lattice regulation? Because the uh, ultra local lattice regulation have additional uh, uh, 
uh, additional feature. They have some additional features. And maybe this additional feature is really not there. And so this really rely, uh, come back to this uh, question, whether all the field theory should come from some ultra local left model, those, those, those kind of things, or maybe field theory, uh, at low energy field theory, don't need this uh, ultra localness. And uh, so I, I think that would be really interesting uh, question. And uh, uh, so, so what I try to mention that uh, maybe these are two different uh, way to do UV completion have a different expander consequence in a sense, uh, maybe ground state energy are different, which is hard to measure, uh, but maybe some topological defect like cosmic string are different. And uh, th that may be measurable. Um, Xiaogang, Matty, uh, yeah. can I make a quick, uh, it's not really, I mean, it's a question, but I'm trying to understand the, the debate between, uh, you know, what has been just said. Isn't morally Shogun what you're trying to do? Uh, let's take example that Nati gave. Let's say you would like to describe a chiral mode. And the suggestion is almost like to do a wire construction, a coupled wire construction. You start and you yeah. say that we're going to put it on a two-dimensional slab. We're going to gap out the wires in between the slab. But it does come at a cost that now you have two wires. One was the, let's say, left-moving fermion on the top wire and the bottom wire that has the opposite chirality fermion. Now, if only somehow one is able to gap out that bottom fermion, one is left with the theory that one desires, right? Okay. And I think that is objection is that, well, but if you try to do that, what if in the process of doing it, you're introducing or you're changing the degeneracy of the ground state? And is that really a viable approach, right? Is, is that, does that capture the essence of the debate? Nati, am I, am I phrasing things correctly? Uh. I don't know. My, my understanding is that uh, here I choose a very particular uh, regulation, in a sense, a so-called lattice regulation, require UV complete theory to have a, a local degree freedom. Uh, uh, you know, this is kind of ultra local assumption. Uh, but however, in the field theory, uh, there is other uh, UV completion, other regulation, which uh, uh, which is in some sense more formal, but uh, you, don't, you don't see the lattice, but still make everything uh, well-defined. And uh, so if you can calculate the instant effect or other uh, property, and uh, then, then, then it's okay. And uh, so, so our discussion is, try, I, I try to say that uh, uh, these two different uh, uh, definition or regulation uh, may have a different uh, uh, experimental consequence. And uh, so that's really a test that uh, whether the field theory, uh, like standard model, should come from local, ultra local model, or should uh, uh, it can be uh, uh, have some more non local origin, you know? And uh, so there's a consequence Wh whether everything is coming from local qubits or not. And here I assume everything coming from local qubits. Then that's put some constraint on the uh, on the possible field theory. Uh, if you don't require that, uh, the possible field theory is broader, you know. And uh, so, so there may be experimental consequence uh, uh, between these two point of view. Yeah. I think there's someone raise the hand to want to ask a question. Please go ahead. Hi, Shayan. So. I think I, I want to make this point as uh, Nadi was saying. So if you take the electroweak sector of the standard model, you have a doublet of chiral, like you have a pair of chiral fermions and you couple it to the weak, weak sector. Now, if you put it on a lattice, this theorem says that the theory is now well-defined in the continuum. If you put it on the lattice, you get these extra doubler modes and let's suppose, let's suppose you start with the standard axial anomaly in the continuum. The anomaly exists in the continuum. You put it on the lattice, nielsen nemanoy theorem says the doublers will emerge and the anomaly will vanish on the lattice. Now, if you want to recover the continuum theory from the lattice theory, there are many problems because once you try to take the continuum limit of a lattice theory, these doubler modes will pop up in the continuum picture. There is no way you can get rid of them. The original picture of the Achkin-Preskill proposal failed just because of that fact. 
that the Wilson term couples to the doubler modes gap gaps them out. But once you take the continuum limit, you break the chiral symmetry, and you break it explicitly by hand because you put that term in there. So separating out the mirror sector on the lattice is is not an issue. You can do that either through domain wall fermions or th through this slab approach. But I think the real picture is that what will be the continuum limit of this theory? If you have gap state on one of the boundary, can you and you gap them out through you gap them out dynamically through an interaction? Do you actually go through a phase transition where you can say that the correlation lengths diverge and you have an actual phase transition? So that you there is a well-defined continuum limit. So a, yes, there is a phase transition. Uh, for the mirror sector to go from gapless chiral fermion mirror sector to the gap uh, phase, uh, there should be a phase transition. Okay, so and in the continuum limit, do you recover chiral fermions as as you have expected? If you take the continuum limit of this model, yes. The the, the argument is that the the, the mirror sector uh, or the other boundary is a totally gapped. Uh, there could be ground state degeneracy, but there is no no mole, no propagating gapless mode in the other boundary or in the mirror sector. So the propagating gapless mode is only the original chiral fermion sector. So at least that is a claim. Okay, okay. But the mirror sector could have a degeneracy. I mean, there's a global ground state degeneracy. So it, it, they could have that. Yeah, because, because the, na the naive picture is that no matter what theory you start with, you start with a Dirac theory or you start with a chiral theory. Like you put a vial fermion in, you have a vial fermion in the continuum, you put it on a lattice and you couple it to some gauge, gauge theory in the continuum. You put it on a lattice, the theory will become vector-like. There is the, the, the chiralness of the theory is gone as soon as you put it on the lattice because, because of the structure of the lattice. Now you can play with this, some symmetries on the lattice, on site or off, like non-local symmetries, and you can uh, engineer some symmet uh, some sort of interaction which which separate out those modes, the mm -hmm. mirrored modes and the original chiral modes. Yeah. But the real trouble is that does that engineering survive in the continuum limit, so that you recover an actual chiral theory in the continuum limit? Because the notion of chirality on a lattice is, is tricky. You, once you put a theory on a lattice, all the symmetries become discrete, like rotations, yeah. translations. So, and once yeah. you will take the continuum limit, you will recover the symmetry. So you have to build your symmetries in such a way that you recover the right, like in the lattice structure, you can have some uh, non-local interactions or you can have symmetries which couple different, uh, gif different fermions on different sites. Yeah. Once you take the continuum limit, they will become like flavor symmetries. There are examples in the lattice literature yeah. of such symmetries. Now, okay. the point is that in any such uh, uh, decoupling of the mirror sector, once you, once you do such a topological structure, the continuum limit should emerge as a, sing, as a single or, a, or, a, or a, like a doublet or a multiplet of chiral fermions, whatever you get in the yeah. picture. Yeah, so my, I, I don't know that what's your real concern is that, but what, what I say, as long as there's a boundary, this mirror boundary is a totally gapped. My, my, my then, concern then is automatically you get recover the continuum chiral fermion theory. Uh, okay. So is there a concern about this statement? Um, my concern is that is the continuum limit well-defined if, if you do have the, ri the right structure you're looking for. Okay. The continuum limit here we are taking is that we fix the lattice constant, take system size, go to infinity. Okay. Then consider low energy. That is a that is a euro uh, uh, thought. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, uh, for following this, uh, you know, when you consider as uh, an example which was mentioned about say Excel anomaly, you know. Uh, uh, that, uh, there are two different, uh, you know, kind of way to, to see uh, anomaly. One is ultraviolet to calculate, you know, uh, 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 divergence and to see that divergence uh, does not vanish. But there is an infrared way to, to see anomaly, and it is uh, 
uh, associated with uh, you know this uh, low energy state and uh, uh, and they are, are of course equivalent right but but once you mentioned that you know that anomaly cancel out uh, then then you are obliged to have something extra in low energy uh, to 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 keep to keep it and it and it's along the line that this modification would change not just uv it would change uh, you know your uh, low, uh, you know ground state or low line state, and then it's very different theory. So, 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 so I think that you no, know, I'm, I'm kind of repeating uh, what what Nati was saying, and uh, you know, and uh, trying to relate it to this particular example of Excel anomaly. You see that uh, that that in this way, it's kind of a radical a radical change of the theory in continuum limit. Uh... Yeah, when you have a, a U1 perturbative anomaly, it does, uh, you, you may have trouble to gap the mirror sector. And, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, so, but uh, here I, I consider uh, the model like SO10, which don't, don't have this uh, perturbative anomaly. Uh, so the gapping out the mirror sector is okay. So this is a condition that uh, after integrate out in fermion, there is no West immunal term. When you have a, mm -hmm. A perturbative anomaly. That means uh, integrated on the fermion. This uh, nonlinear sigma model for Higgs field will have a West immuno Witten term, and the uh, presence of West immuno Witten term would prevent uh, uh, prevent you to have a gapped disordered phase. The disordered phase will be gapless. Mm -hmm. So that's why the perturbative anomaly matters here. Okay, yeah, I understand that, but right, yeah. but it, then it's conditional on the C, right? Yeah. Because then, then uh, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Any more questions? It looks a concern there was just really about the low energy field theory. I think the only thing that makes different was the topological field theory, low energy, but that's additional things can be aided. But uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I think there's, a, there's a very, very good comment with Nati. That is a uh, certain, certain low energy, certain regulation uh, require this uh, additional topological field theory at low energy. But, but uh, maybe there's a non lattice regulation don't require that. And uh, there may be experimental consequence for that. Yeah, okay. that's really interesting. Yeah, but that's a statement of uh, the statement about the free from perturbative local anomaly and uh, non perturbative global anomalies, yeah. which you didn't mention. <laughs> yeah. Any comments or questions? Well, if not, uh, let's thanks uh, Xiaogang again. Thank you very much, Xiaogang. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.